in the 17th and 18th century, Newton was famous for his work on light. And this paper was revolutionary because it claimed to show that colour doesn't come from the medium that a ray of light passes from, but that the colours are already in the white light that comes from the sun. So science has grown and Newton's reputation has grown at the same time and I think those two processes are interlinked. And it's that particular aspect of Newton that interests me. And I was very, very appreciative of the invitation to write this particular paper, partly because I'm a great fan of the Royal Society and it's exciting to be contributing to a 350th anniversary issue, and also because it prompted me to look at this paper far more closely than I ever have done before, read some of the other things that have been written about it, and I, I found that quite fascinating. Back then, the papers tended to be quite short. They were occasionally in Latin. They were quite often in the form of letters rather than what we would recognise as a, an official paper. There were no footnotes. Perhaps most strikingly, a lot of them weren't even on what we would call science. So, for example, in the same issue that Isaac Newton's letter was printed, note it was a letter, not an article, uh, there was an essay on music and there was a commentary on Eastern India. It seems back then there was a lot of rivalry between fellow scientists. Do you think the attitude has changed, as in are scientists now more collaborative, or is that, that rivalry still, still I there? I think the ideology of how scientific research happens remains the same. There was an ideology then, as there is now, that uh, everybody is united in the search for truth, and that has to tr transcend individual ambitions or national differences. I think back in the 17th and 18th century, it was far easier to see how those personal rivalries played out. So Isaac Newton, for example, had several people who were more or less enemies, I and mean, Gottfried Leibniz was a very famous one, Robert Hooke at the Royal Society, and also John Flamsteed at the Royal Observatory. So for example, just on Newton and Robert Hooke, there's that very, very famous statement, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Now, one misunderstanding is that he didn't originate that statement himself. It had been around for several hundred years. It was originated by Bernard Rochard. The second point is, this is a bit more debatable, is that he wrote it in a letter to Robert Hooke. And he was trying simultaneously to show that if he had got his ideas, he certainly hadn't plagiarised them from Hooke because there was a long debate between the two men about who'd thought first about various aspects of optics and gravitation. Uh, but I think also um, he was doing what now would be totally politically incorrect, that he was making a personal dig at Hooke because Hooke is known to have been a very small person and he was probably physically rather disabled. So uh, it seems likely that Newton was also making a very offensive personal slight on Hooke's appearance. In this particular paper, I was interested in exploring all the ret rhetorical tactics that Newton used to establish his case. And I personally hadn't realised quite how strongly rhetorical the paper was. But the, there were two referees. I have no idea who they were. But both of them were quite surprised that I should be so critical to Newton and about Newton. And they found that quite difficult to accept. And so the thing that I learned is, yet again, how much loyalty there is to the figure of or the perception of Newton as an absolute hero who could never be wrong. He wasn't. He was a human being. When he wrote this paper, he was still relatively young. Uh, nobody had heard of him. He wasn't particularly famous. He didn't do exactly what he was asked to do. He was asked to write about his telescope, but he didn't. He chose to write about his prism experiments. His ideas weren't immediately accepted, nor were his ideas about gravity. And there was, I, what I tried to do in writing this paper was present Newton as he would have been perceived at the time without that retrospective knowledge and adulation that everybody now has.